Hello. Today, after unfortunately quite a long while, we'd like to continue our tradition and we are visiting the Sorokin's welcoming summer house. Hello, my dear creative colleagues. Before I start my tutorial, I'd like to wholeheartedly thank you for your attention and moral support when I had a difficult time. Your words helped me recover. Thank you a lot. So, today I'd like to introduce a pattern that was given on the Astronomer's Tero website without any detailed explanation. I've called it duck feet or crow's feet, as it has reminded me bird's footprint, however you can as well call it rhombuses. It is one of the varieties of patterns woven with the help of rope stripes. Here are our rope stripes. It is what we are going to start with. A rope stripe can consist of three rows, four rows. In our case I propose you to make a rope stripe consisting of five rows because I'm going to apply only one motif of a pattern instead of three, just to show you. So here is my semi-finished piece. I'm going to weave a triangle-shaped article. I've already woven a three-tube rope with a tube of a contrast color, finished it. Then I insert waste tubes I'm going to take out afterwards, after which I weave five rows of rope. Here is my rope consisting of five rows. Now to explain you how I've woven this printed cotton style row, let me show it to you. Here my tubes are almost over, this one I leave and the last tube I lead over the last pole. With the help of a knitting needle I lead it through like this. Put a knitting needle inside like this. This way we finish the row. Now I drop a bit of glue to make it stronger. In this case I use school glue. I drop some glue onto the last but one pole and the last one. That's all, we finish the row. Now I take the waste tube. I press the waste tubes. There are always some waste tubes left after work is finished. After which I weave a row in the printed cotton technique. Well, actually you don't necessarily have to weave printed cotton, just lead a tube behind three or two poles, whatever. One more thing, these tubes mustn't be long, because afterwards it will be very difficult to take them out. So I laid the tube here and in the same way I do with the whole row, after which I continue weaving. If you need to repeat the motif a few times, you have to make several rope stripes. If there is no such need, then we have to finish the work completely. Continue weaving. Since I don't suppose to use a contrast tube later, so I take the tubes of a basic color and finish the work. I prefer adding some glue. I've advertised dragon glue many times already. So I drop some glue and stick one tube to one pole, another tube to another pole. Press with my fingers for a while and continue weaving. Or you can do as other weavers do, 
put a loop on and continue weaving this way. Weave up to the required height, finish the work completely. So I woven the required number of rows, lifted the corner. Now I take my vest tube out in order to leave space for a stripe between the poles. If it is hard to take the whole tube out right away, here at the corner for example, you can help yourself with your fingers. This way continue until you take all the waste tubes out. So I've taken all the waste tubes out. Now a row tube consisting of five rows is clearly seen. Further, in order to perform interweaving with double tubes, it's better to prime the article in this area. Why do I emphasize this area in particular? Because if you suppose a picture or handles here, of course you don't prime the area where they are supposed to be. But this area requires priming in order to fix these stripes strong. So far you can shift them. When primed, they will be fixed thoroughly. Now we are going to twine the poles round through the stripe. Take the tubes. The tubes are moistened. I soften them with my fingers carefully in order to make them flexible. Drop a bit of dragon glue. And having placed one tube onto another, I insert them behind any pole and glue. This way we glue our double tubes and start placing them carefully. Look. I hold there and approach from uh, above. We have to twine around this pole from above. Twisting two tubes at a time is difficult, so I do one by one. Insert one tube. Then I lead the second one next to it. I hold them from beneath and make sure the tubes lie nicely without going onto each other. Like this, we perform such an interlacing. Now, in the same way, behind the pole, we lead through the first, the first inside tube at first. And then we lead the second tube just next to it. This second tube will lie onto the first one just because we have passed only one tube. If you made a gap higher, you could work with two double tubes at a time. Here I lead one tube and the second tube right next to each, so that it doesn't lie onto the first one. Now we are forwarding towards the next pole. However, we don't wrap it round, but just lead a tube behind it instead. We lead the first tube downward behind the pole, and then the second tube just next to it carefully. We lead the tubes behind the pole and then lead them back in the same sequence. Here is our first tube. They have fixed already. You can pull them tight. Here I've led my first tube through and then go the second one and continue in the same way again. Lead the tubes toward the top, twine the pole around and lead them behind it from beneath. I have performed four interlaces and continue the whole pattern circle-wise. Actually, there is no trick, just twining around with each tube by turn. As for this small barrel, unfortunately I don't have the vertical anymore to show you. But I believe everything is clearly seen from the picture. Here there are three rope stripes consisting of four rows each. 
In order to get a pattern like this, you have to interlace checkerwise. It is better to start interlacing from the lowest row, because leading a tube behind a pole is much easier than twining around it. What else? Here you can see a variety of this very pattern. Look, I've interwoven the poles in the same way. At first the upper row, then the lower row in the mirror image. It is a separate pattern I've got in my book. Everything is shown here in detail. Here are three varieties of the pattern. One, two, and the third one is the one I'm holding. Those interested can obtain the book and read instructions in detail. Thanks a lot for your attention. Good luck to you!